manipulating the DOM is probably the costliest aspect in application development. Therefore, JavaScript frameworks are putting a significant amount of effort to tackle this problem. In case you are a beginner, here I have created a simple HTML page with one header one tag. Okay, so when you run this page in the browser, it shows something like this. But internally, this entire HTML is transformed into a nested object. As you can see, the entire object can be referred by the key called a document. Also, it has its uh, child's head and body. So same as you can see, we can print the, their values. Also from here, we can manipulate the styles as well, uh, dot uh, styles. So yeah, it became pink. This hierarchy is called document object model or DOM. Coming back to our topic, one of the approach popularized mainly due to the uh, wide use in Facebook's React library is known as virtual DOM. The concept of virtual DOM is each component will create and maintain an in-memory representation of its DOM. Every time that component is rendered, a new version of the virtual DOM is created and compared with the older version. And it hits only those nodes that need to be changed in the real DOM. On the other hand, Ember with its Glimmer approach brought a substantial improvement in React's approach. So instead of uh, fully copying the browser DOM, it just tracks the handlebar expressions. And from there, it creates a tree of stream that consumes less memory, at least in, in uh, comparison with the former one. All right. So before we get into the details of incremental DOM strategy, uh, I think I should give you some background of it. So now we are in the age of uh, IV render engine, right? Starting from Angular 9, it is the default compiler used by any Angular project. This IV render engine mainly helps to resolve three components of web application development. Uh, one is smaller build size, faster build and improved de debugging facility. So if we compare current approach with the legacy view engine one, the framework used to go through each and every node in the DOM and render them individually with the help of a giant switch case. So if we have to reduce the bundle size, we should only ship those portion of the code or files to the browser which is actually required for the application to run and the rest all can be scrapped. This is what we call tree shaking and view engine code was not tree shakeable. So as a result, even if we don't have a pipe in our application, we still had to carry the logic to create a pipe. To elaborate further, an ng if ng for doesn't know its purpose unless a view engine framework method processes it and uh, it renders it. So all this happens in the runtime. So big problem. To resolve this high memory footprint problem uh, of virtual DOM and making the render engine tree shakeable, Google adopted a strategy called incremental DOM or in short IDOM. The crux of this incremental DOM strategy is every component gets compiled into a series of instruction which paints the screen, updates them in place instead of creating an in-memory layout. Mostly three instructions are responsible for rendering a HTML page. Uh, so first one is element open. It corresponds to the opening tag. Element close represents the closing tag and text for the textual nodes. Let me show an example first. As you can see here, we have a very simple piece of HTML code and its corresponding IV function. Inside the render hello world function, we have the set of instructions to render the screen. And this itself is the render engine, contrary to the former one. So instead of building a representation of the DOM tree in memory, it just uses a real DOM.
Now here comes the final question. Why did Google choose to go with incremental DOM strategy? You know, because already there was uh, other famous strategies available. So, okay. Whatever improvement you see in Google starting from its uh, template engine to angular force uh, view engine and now iv render engine they had one fixed goal in mind that is the application should perform seamlessly in mobile devices especially for the low performing mobile phones for this reason a tree shakeable render engine comes really really handy that reduces the number of js file a device has to download during the application bootstrap time as you can see all these instructions are known in the compile time only here the component directly refers to the instructions and in case you don't have a pipe instruction or something else basically for an example pipe you are, you are not using it then you know you'll you'll never need it in the compile time only so easily we can scrap it off also another drawback uh, which the virtual dom strategy suffers from is that every time a component is rendered a new memory structure of the real dom will be generated from the scratch and thereby it increases the memory footprint for the current on the other hand our incremental dom needs memory only when a node is added or removed from the dom that too the memory requirement is directly proportional to the change and not the size of the whole dom i think that makes a lot of uh, difference so as an outcome of the above it helps to reduce the build time as well also since the dev tool is able to step through each and every instruction as as a, as a result this this approach makes debugging uh, profiling everything much much easier for the developer and qa as well so i think it's pretty clear why google adopted uh, this incremental dom strategy okay this is a very common interview question if you are going for an advanced uh, angular uh, developer role so do keep in mind so we have learned what is an incremental dom uh, and uh, what are the benefits of using uh, incremental dom and why google adopted it so i think uh, it's clear now so that's all for today if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel thanks a lot for watching